Hello, and welcome once again to Yoga for Kids and Their Adults. My name's Tony. I'm here at Me Time LLC, a massage and yoga studio here in Troy, Alabama. This program is sponsored in part by the Charles Henderson Child Health Center. They are a pediatric physician and dental office taking care of children from birth to age 19. They fund this program through a grant that they receive from the Children's Trust Fund, whose purpose is to prevent child abuse and neglect. So thank you for joining us once again on this very festive occasion. Today is St. Patrick's Day. Well, if you're watching this on Friday, it's yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, but you can still join in on the fun. So St. Patrick's Day is the celebration of St. Patrick, who did a lot of good works in his time back years and years ago. And we celebrate every year on the 17th of March here in the United States by wearing green and celebrating with like Irish food. It's, it's kind of become a celebration of Irish culture. I know I'm looking forward to my corned beef and cabbage this evening. We make it with potatoes and onions and carrots and it's a big feast and we all get together and we talk and we laugh and we listen to Irish music, usually drinking songs, but you know, Irish jigs and, and the like. And I thought, wouldn't it be fantastic if we did Irish b inspired yoga poses. So some of these yoga poses are going to seem very, very familiar. We're just going to give them slightly different names for today. Um, like instead of having star pose, it's going to become the four-leafed clover um, and other settings. And we're also going to throw in a few additional uh poses that I found uh, in my research that um, other yogis have come up with and that just kind of seemed like a fun idea and I'm going to put my own little twist on some of them. So all you're really going to need today is yourself. If you have a yoga mat, you can absolutely use it or a blanket or a, a towel or a rug or even just the bare floor. In fact, today, if you look outside, the sun is shining down. It's a beautiful day. If you want to practice today outside, you absolutely can. But you might want to have a surface so that when we do get down on the ground, you're not going to get all muddy and grassy and dirty. Okay. And parents, this is going to be a fun routine today and it'll be active and moving and you can join in or just sit back and enjoy as the kids are having a good time too. So if you are ready for me, I am ready for you. And I found something that was absolutely amazing as a warm-up today. Now, I know you've probably heard of the Irish blessing. Well, here is a version that incorporates different yoga poses. So let me read the, the Irish blessing first and then we're going to do the yoga poses along with it. So first it says, may you be blessed with the strength of heaven. And for that one, when we get to it, we're going to reach up with one hand like we're reaching up to heaven. And then we're going to reach up with the other hand like we're reaching up to heaven. And we're going to reach up with both hands like we're reaching up to heaven. Okay, so that's the Irish blessing of may you be blessed with the strength of heaven. So reach, reach, reach. Okay, we're going to get to it. Next is going to be the light of the sun. And this is the star pose because our sun is a big star. So while you're in the star, I want you to take a deep breath in. Exhale. And imagine that you are radiating light and warmth down on the earth below. And that's us. We're here on the earth. The next portion of it. It says, and the radiance of the moon. Now, this is going to be a little challenging. So if you're not quite ready for this, that's okay. We can do a different version. If you're not quite ready for the big movements, we're going to go into the half moon pose. And that can be kind of daunting. All right. You can do this in front of a wall. You can do this without anything around you, maybe with some cushions or something, or you can hold on for this over the substitution pose, okay? So for the half moon pose, you're going to turn one foot out. You're going to reach your hands out. You're going to reach forward, lifting your foot over here. Bring your hand down to the floor and bring your foot up. And this is the half moon pose. Now, if your body's not quite able to do that, you're going to get into crescent moon, which is bending to one side with your arms going one side and your hips going to the opposite side. Okay, so even on the other side, you're going to turn one foot to the other side, you're going to bring your arms out, bring your arm down, bring your leg up to half moon pose. 
And again, if your body is not really willing to do that, you can go into the crescent moon pose for that side. Okay? So that's your substitution. If you can't do the half moon, you can do the crescent. All right? Uh, and then there's the splendor of fire, and that is breath of fire. Now, I've learned this as the stoking breath, where you take a deep breath in, blow it all out, blow it all out, out loud, and then you stoke it. <laughs> and that's going to warm you up from inside. Okay, so that's the breath of fire, the stoking breath. Um, and the depth of the sea. And that's when you dive down into ragdoll and just let your arms hang down. This is a nice stretch for your back and your hips and your hamstrings. So this is the depth of the sea. And then it says to the stability of the earth. So from there you're going to squat down, bringing your hands to the floor. And you're going to breathe quietly. <sighs> And then the firmness of the rock, you're going to stand up tall in mountain pose. Okay, so this is going to be our warm-up today. This is our St. Patrick's Day yoga blessing. And so if you, are you ready for me? I'm ready for you. Let's get this done. So we're going to start off in our mountain pose with our feet under our hips, our hips under our shoulders, our ears over our shoulders, and our hands at our side. Everybody ready in our starting pose? Awesome. Now, say this with me. May you be blessed with the strength of heaven. May you be blessed with the strength of heaven. And again, we're going to reach up with one hand like we're reaching up to the heavens. And we're going to reach up with one hand we're gonna, like we're reaching from the heavens. And then we're going to reach with both hands like we're reaching up to the heavens. May you be blessed with the strength of the heavens. Can you feel that strength as you're reaching up? Woo! I can feel it. In the light of the sun. So now you're going to step out, bring your arms out, back to star pose. Take a couple breaths here. So we have been blessed with the strength of the heavens, the light of the sun, and the next is the radiance of the moon. So this is where you're going to turn one foot to the side, Re keep your arms out, reach down to the floor with one hand, reach up to the sky with the other. Now, if you can't do this, go ahead to that crescent moon pose. One more breath. And then back up. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to swap one foot, turn it out to the side, arms out wide, reach over and down so your hand comes to the floor, reach your back leg up, and this is half moon pose. So with the light of the moon, the radiance of the moon, go ahead and stand back up now. Again, if you weren't able to do the half moon, you can do the crescent moon pose and keep up with us. Awesome. So we have had the strength of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, and the splendor of fire. So again, we're standing in our mountain pose, and we're going to do that stoking breath I told you about. So deep breath in, blow everything out, and then stoke your fire. Can you do that? Let's do five more stoking breaths, okay? Breathe in, breathe out and stoke five times. <laughs> awesome. Do you feel that energy? It's like stoking a fire so it burns more brightly. And then with the speed of lightning, and that's lightning pose. And for you and I, we know this is chair pose. So for this, keeping your feet about shoulder width apart, you're going to bend your knees, bringing your bottom back, your arms upright, and you look like a flash of lightning, don't you? The zigzaggy type shape. The speed of lightning. And then the swiftness of wind. We're going to do the wind chime pose. So go ahead and stand back up. Mountain pose. Arms up this time. And wind chimes, when the wind blows, what do they do? They wag back and forth in the wind. So can you do this? It's a nice loosening pose. With the swiftness of the wind. And then to the depths of the sea and dive down. Let your arms hang down. Now, if you can reach the floor, you can cross your arms so that they don't drag on the floor. If you can't quite reach the floor, just let them dangle right there. This is called the ragdoll pose. 
All right. And then there's the stability of the earth. So kneel and squat down and take some calming breaths, some silent breaths in and out through the nose. Five breaths here. Two. Three. Four. Five. And the firmness of rock. So stand tall in mountain pose with your hands at prayer at heart center. And that's the Irish Blessing Yoga poses. That was pretty neat. So the whole blessing is may you be blessed with the strength of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire. <sighs> <laughs> the speed of lightning, the swiftness of the wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of the earth, and the firmness of rock. How do you feel? That's an amazing way to warm up, isn't it? Awesome. So we've already started with some pretty good Irishy kind of yoga poses. Um, and now, I found some really interesting poses out there. One, they call the horseshoe pose. I guess back in old, old Ireland, where they still had the horses and the carts and all that, they would have to regularly change the horse's shoes. Now, if you're out in farm country, you're probably pretty familiar with this practice, too. So, you know that when the horse has to get its shoe done and you have to hold its foot, you have to get them to bring their foot up. So what we're going to do is we are going to bring our foot up and tap it. Can you do that? Bring your foot up and tap it for the horseshoe pose. And the other foot and tap it. Let's do that one more time. Tap and up and tap. The horseshoe pose. Now, we can add something to that and make it into the Irish jig pose. Ooh, this was actually kind of fun. I thought this was a neat idea. So you start off with the horseshoe pose, out, and then you bring it in and tap, and then back out and tap and down. Want to try that with me? The Irish jig pose. So you start off with the horseshoe and tap, bring it in and tap and down. Let's try it on the other foot. Okay, so out and in and out and down. One more time on this side, okay? Out and in and out and down. That's the Irish jig pose. I thought that was genius. I, I hope you're enjoying it. Let's do that one more time on both feet. Okay? So if you can, picture in your head, hear the little violin, that fiddle. And tap and in and tap and down. And tap and in and tap and down. That just seems like so much fun to me. I hope you're having fun with this. All right. The next pose is actually called the St. Patrick's pose. All right. It's a variation of mountain. So you're going to stand up tall like a mountain and bring your hands to prayer at heart center. Because he was a very, very spiritual man. And he liked to pray and bless people along his travels. And so this is the St. Patrick's mountain pose. It's a very good come back to stillness, especially after that jig. Now, the next pose I have for you is the rainbow pose. Now, you might know this as the crescent moon pose. But today, since we're drawing on the luck of the Irish and the pot of gold at the end of every rainbow, we're going to bring our hands in prayer all the way up. And we're going to lean to one side, bringing our hands to one side and our hips to the opposite side. So it makes a C with our bodies. Can you do that? Can you make a C with your body? Like a crescent moon or a rainbow? Awesome. Let's try it on the other side. So breathe in, bring your hands up, breathe out, bring them out and down and bring your hips over to the side as well. Again, you're making this beautiful C with your body. Can you tell me what sound <coughs> a C makes? K, K. Or the soft C is S, like an S. Very good. Breathe in, bring your hands up. Breathe out, let them fall down to your sides. 
Now, another pose I had seen, there were two different versions of the leprechaun pose that I found. So let's see what you think of each one. So from our mountain pose, we're going to go into something that's similar to tree pose. So you're gonna shift your weight to one side, lift your opposite knee, but this time instead of turning your knee out and putting your foot flat, you're just gonna turn your knee out and let your foot kind of stay there. And instead of bringing your hands to prayer at heart center, you're gonna have them in kind of cactus arms, and then you're gonna kick your foot out, kind of bounce with it like a jig. This is a, one version of the leprechaun pose. Now bring your foot down. Let's do that on the other side. So shift your weight over to one foot. Lift that foot. Bring that leg out. Arm still in cactus. And kick and kick and kick. This is the leprechaun pose like he's doing a jig. And down. Now get into a little bit of a wider stance. So a little bit wider than hip distance. Now, the other version of leprechaun pose I found, we might know as the horse stance. So with this wide stance, bend your knees, keep your torso upright, and your arms out like you're holding the reins. And with this pose, with this version of leprechaun, he's holding a pot of gold. So if you can imagine hefting this big, huge cauldron of gold, this is the second version of leprechaun pose. So, we go from dancing a jig to holding a pot of gold. That's amazing. You're doing so well. I'm proud of you. Now, another St. Patrick's Day pose I saw was called the four-leaf clover. And again, this is we know this as the star pose with a nice wide stance, toes pointing out, arms up and pointing out. And we have one leaf, two leaf, three leaf, Four leaf, for a four leaf clover. How amazing is that? Can you count with me? One, two, three, four. Four leaves on this clover. And that's supposed to be very lucky. Now, another pose I found was called the harp pose. But you and I might know this as the uh, peaceful warrior. Let's see. No, it's the uh, reverse warrior. There we go. That's what it was. So to get into the reverse warrior, let's start go by going into warrior two. So we turn one foot out to the side. The other foot, we might need to hop forward a little bit to get a nice stable base. We're going to bend this turned out knee. Hips are facing the front. Arms are up and level. And we're looking over our left hand here, our turned out hand. Now, to get to the reverse warrior, you drop your back hand, flip this palm, and bring it up and over, and you kind of look like you're holding a harp. So I can see this. This is actually kind of a nice pose. Can you, can you feel that arch in your back? Can you feel or kind of see that you're holding a harp in your hands? Wonderful. Let's try this on the other side. So go back to warrior two. Straighten up. Turn our feet the opposite way. Out. Bend that knee. Arms are still level with the ground. Hips are still facing the front. Facing over this front hand here. Now we're going to drop our back hand. Flip the palm on this other hand. And bring it up and over. So it's a nice arch. And we can reach out like we're holding a harp. Almost kind of looks like we're holding a big beach ball, doesn't it? And we're coming up to that if you haven't already been on spring break. Now back to warrior two. Stand up back to our four leaf clover pose. And then we're going to come down to the ground. So we're going to bend forward and let our arms hang. Again, this is the ragdoll. Like we're going deep down into the sea. And then we're going to come down to our belly. So bring your hands over to one side, bring your feet to the other, and lower down. Now the bow pose is what we know this as, but they're calling it the pot of gold. And what that is, is you're going to lift up, bend your knees, and hold on to your feet. Ha! I can get it. I can. 
So our bow pose, or a pot of gold. Excellent. Now come down. And we are going to go into our child's pose for just a moment. And they're going to call it the Blarney Stone Pose. So push your body up and back over your heels. Bring your head down to the mat. This is child's pose. But for St. Patrick's Day, we're going to call this the Blarney Stone Pose. If you had a partner bending over your back, that's the lizard on a rock pose. It's amazing the creativity we can have with simple yoga poses. Now go ahead and come back up to your tabletop. That's with your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And we're going to go into the shamrock pose. Now a shamrock is a three-leafed clover. And so we know this pose as the three-legged dog. Ooh. So we're going to keep our hands down here. I'm going to tuck our toes up under because we're going to lift our hips up and push back onto our heels. You ready? Inhale and lift your hips up. Push back onto your heels and you're in downward facing dog. Now for this shamrock, this is the three-legged dog. So pick a leg and lift it. You can lift it just a little bit and bend your knee. You can lift it all the way up to the sky and anywhere in between. And you are in your shamrock pose or your three-legged dog. Go ahead and bring that leg down and do the same thing on the opposite side. So lift that leg, even if it's just a little bit, or you bend your knee, or you bring it all the way up to the sky. Just lift it up for your three-legged dog or your shamrock pose. And then bring it down. Come back down to your Blarney Stone. That's a child's pose. And that's a nice little recovery pose. Yay, Blarney Stone! And when you're ready, come back up. And we are going to they finish off with the Irish flag pose. So what they have suggested is to stand up in mountain pose. So come back up to mountain. And again, your feet are under your hips, your hips are under your shoulders, your shoulders are under your ears, your arms are at your side. But for this Irish flag pose, imagine you're standing on the mountain and you're going to bring your hands overhead like you're holding on to the flag, like the flagpole. And you're going to bring that from side to side like you're holding and waving the Irish flag. And that is where we are going to end the active portion of our program today. And I would like to leave you with a nice little Irish blessing. Let's go ahead and come back down to the floor and sit in our easy pose. That's crisscross applesauce for all you youngsters out there. Now, I'm going to read to you this Irish blessing that we've already worked through and did the poses for. But I want you to sit tall Close your eyes and walk through those poses with me or see if you can visualize what the poem is actually saying. Are you ready? Because this is a moment of stillness here. Take a breath. Wiggle anything out that you need to. Get all those wiggles out. Sit upright. Now, if you need help resting, you can always bring your thumb to that middle bone of your ring finger. And that's going to help you relax and let go. That's really good for you adults, too. So, now that you're relaxed and your breathing is returned to normal-ish, say this in your mind with me, or after me. Repeat after me. There we go. May you be blessed with the strength of heaven. Now, remember, we reached up overhead. Or what does the strength of heaven mean to you? May you be blessed with the light of the sun. That was the star pose. What does the light of the sun mean to you? And the radiance of the moon. What did we do? We did the half moon pose, or if we couldn't quite make our bodies do that, we did the crescent moon pose. What does the radiance of the moon mean to you? What does it look like to you? May you be blessed with the splendor of fire. That was a stoking breath, the (sighs) 
How did that make you feel? Did you feel like you were stoking a fire? What does the splendor of fire mean to you? May you be blessed with the speed of lightning. That was the chair pose. We looked like a, a strike of lightning, that zigzaggy pose. But what does the splendor of fire mean to you? May you be blessed with the swiftness of wind and we were wind chimes blowing in the breeze. What does the swiftness of wind conjure up in your mind? What does it mean to you? May you be blessed with the depth of the sea. And that was the ragdoll pose. We kind of hung down and let our arms dangle. But what does the depth of the sea mean to you? What does it conjure up here in your mind? May you be blessed with the stability of earth. And we squatted down and we breathed silently. Very stable like the earth. What does the stability of earth mean to you? And may you be blessed with the firmness of rock. And we stood back up in mountain pose. What does the firmness of rock mean to you? What images does, does it have dancing in your head? And the part that I know that's not on here is may the sun forever shine on your face. May the wind forever be at your back. And may God hold you in the palm of his hands. So I hope that every one of you has a safe and happy St. Patrick's Day. And that you come back next week to join me again. Because I'm Tony, and I'm here at Me Time LLC, a massage and yoga studio here in Troy, Alabama. And this program is sponsored in part by the Charles Henderson Child Health Center. They are a pediatric physician and dental office taking care of children from birth to age 19. They fund this program through a grant that they receive from the Children's Trust Fund, whose purpose is to prevent child abuse and neglect. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me today for our celebration of St. Patrick's Day through yoga. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderfully lucky weekend. And hopefully the weather will participate and we can go outside and do this all over again. Until then, remember to be kind to yourself and others. Namaste. Namaste.